Okay, Nick and Andy, we have some positive news to talk about with the US men's national team right now. They won the Nations League, uh, beat in Mexico in the final. There's a lot of positive vibes around the team now. We're going to focus a lot, Nick, about what is next for the team, what the expectations are for what's going to be a huge Copa America on American soil this summer. But what do we learn from Nations League, Glory? You're covering it very closely for PST. Both you guys were. Um, Because sometimes I find it hard to judge with the opponents the US are playing in the CONCACAF region. But this was quite a big step forward for Greg Bohart's side. It was. We learned that we are a vibes team. And that is fun. Be the vibes team. Embrace right the after, hey, you after can. being anti-vibes uh, yes. World Cup cycles ago, this is great. I love this. <laughs> I think there's a very good chance that uh, when it all comes crashing down, it will be the opposite of a vibes team because of some of the ingredients inside of that vibes team. Um, it was super awkward. Let's get this out of the room. Every time they shot to the arenas. <laughs> The rain of the uh, Geo's parents in the seats during that game, and that is a little bit of a reminder of how things can go in the other direction. But yes, this is a vibes team, and um, if they can manage to not get destroyed in the friendly against Brazil, in the friendly against uh, the Colombia is the other one right now that's been announced. Like those are very difficult games, and that that they have the chance to send a warning shot. But the way the group stage sets up for them in the Copa America, with the two very winnable games first and then the ability to say even if you lose the uruguay that ah we didn't really need it this it sets up for a summer of vibes just don't blow it in those friendlies and and do better than you did against the netherlands when you run into a buzzsaw in, in the knockout rounds yeah it's a great point right Andy. there's a really good opportunity there to just ease your way, way into that tournament this summer getting a good positive atmosphere around the team and then kind of go for it in the knockout rounds and i think Arguably, for me, this might be a bit weird to say, but this is a much better test of where this team is actually at and its ceiling than the World Cup was. Because if you look at the World Cup group, Wales, Iran, okay, solid international teams. England weren't great in that one game. And then the Netherlands are good, but still not as good right now as the best that South America has to offer. So this summer really should be the litmus test and the the biggest learning we can have around this group of young players not just where they're at right now, but what they can achieve in the World Cup on home soil in 2026 as well. Yeah. Hey, I got an idea. Let's stop saying these young players, this young <laughs> team. Let's let them be. All right. They're all obviously they're all professionals, but let's let them be the guys now. And, and, Sounds and like that's not to, <laughs> well, but it's it's not to say that 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 they've they have they have earned that on the field. The, the coming back against Jamaica, beating Mexico for. Uh, extending the the unbeaten streak against Mexico seven times, three straight nations. Like they have earned the right to now think of them as this is the group, this is the team, this is the team that we have been picturing all of these young players becoming for so long. They are now at that point. Twenty twenty four, obviously with an eye towards twenty twenty six, was always going to be the end goal. But this is now this is the ramping up period. This is where it needs to really hit the accelerator and go go go. And and I think that we, I think the players understand that as well. And I think that's the most important thing because as an international manager, you only have so much influence. Which is why I think all of the, all of the hate for Greg Berhalter is so overplayed. Uh, he can only do so much to affect positively or negatively, by the way, an international team when you have a day or two of training before going into uh, a couple of very important games. And, and so the players understand what is on the line now. They understand that this next, what, f- uh, 24, 36 months is, a, is effectively going to be their legacy for their careers, at least in the United States. And that matters to them you can see it you can see the way they've come together you can see the way they relish and celebrate moments as well and that was the thing that stuck out to me about the the moments after the game against mexico was the togetherness and the joy that they had for each other and the way they loved celebrating with each other and celebrating each other it's just nick is right vibes they are the vibes team and you know what greg berhalter is the vibes cultivator and you have to give him credit for that yeah because pretty much to a man right every single player talks highly of greg berhalter what he's created what he does what how he keeps in touch with them helps them on a a personal level as well as on a playing level so they're obviously all in on the philosophy of the team the coach there's a lot of noise about the tactics and how they play and 
I honestly do think that part of that is about because of the lack of games they've had against the top opposition. And then they lose the Netherlands in the World Cup. They lose to Germany in a friendly quite convincingly. So I, this is why I think this summer is so huge in the friendlies, like Nick mentioned, before Copa America starts, just to give everybody a sense of this is really where we're at and what's achievable with this team. I still feel like right now, again, you can only beat what's in front of you, but this is a very weak CONCACAF cycle for the other teams that are up there around them. And they've dominated, won the trophies. That's all you can do. But I think that's why there is such a big question mark around Greg Bohalter sometimes, because like, yeah, Mexico is down right now. Costa Rica is down. Jamaica is a bit all over the place and rebuilding. So that's interesting to me. But Nick, what's also inter interesting to me is that which players have kind of made their case for a starting spot this summer? We look at someone like Hadji Wright, wasn't even in the original squad, came on, was heroic in the semi-final win against Jamaica and then started the final as well. I mean, Chris Richards looks like he's now done that spot. And then Gio Reyna, you mentioned him earlier. Um, and great to have Tyler Adams back as well. We know he's going to start if he's fit. But those players, any others that you really thought, yeah, you know what, they are going to start in Copa America this summer? Yeah, I, I'm really interested in the Haji Wright, who wasn't even supposed to be here. But now on his resume, uh, we talked about the danger of, and this is nothing, look, Jesus Ferraro may end up being a fantastic player. Ferreira, excuse me, he may end up being a fantastic player, but he scored a lot of goals against the lesser sides of CONCACAF. What Haji Wright has on his resume now is a goal against Morocco in a friendly, uh, a goal in an elimination game against Netherlands, uh, two goals to get them to another elimination against Jamaica and an assist against Mexico. Those those are prove-it moments. And I, Tim Ream had the same thing happen at the World Cup, a guy who wasn't going to go to the World Cup. And frankly, as much as I would have liked to see him there, I would have understood if Berhalter would have left him off. Now I can't imagine a meaningful game without him, even though he's not young. So I Wright is the big name for me. That doesn't mean he's going to start because he's going up against Balogun for playing time. And I don't see Berhalter changing the way he lines up his strikers. So it, it's those two guys and it's all the reminders, right? Um, Serginho Dest just had some moments and the, the enduring moments going into this tournament were when he did something just awful, like the, the it's soccer wise awful when he got the red card that could have cost them something. And instead he goes out there and shows us, I mean, the and one mixtape of CONCACAF with turns and flicks and dribbles. So um, yeah, Dest and right. I mean, Raina, you're going to say for sure. And, and, that's a whole nother topic. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's interesting to me as well, Andy, that so many of these players we mentioned now, are, are probably Rainer aside, are at very good situations in their club teams. Talking about Chris Richards playing at Palace, Hadji Wright scoring goals, leading the line for Coventry. Josh Sargent was originally in the squad. Uh, he was left out, but he's obviously firing all cylinders with Norwich City as well. And then Dest, uh, Tillman, Pepe at PSV Eindhoven, Pulisic, Musa. Um, at Milan, thriving there as well. So it's a great situation in terms of where the player pool is at in their club career heading into this summer. I think that's the most exciting thing uh, for me watching this team. So what do you think is actually achievable? We've talked about this a lot at Copa America this summer for the US. Uh, they, they're definitely out of the group. They are... At, anytime you get into a group and the knockout tournament. You get through the group stage. That is objective number one. You get to the knockouts and it all becomes about the matchups that you get head to head. Like any team on its day can go out there and win. Any team on its day can go out there and turn in not the best performance and go home despite being one of the better teams at the tournament. This team needs a run to the semifinals though, I, I believe, and, and to really be competitive for a place in the final, because that is the next step. We talk about mm -hmm. kind of just the context of where they are in CONCACAF right now. Mexico's bad. Mexico's really bad. There's a reason that we haven't lost to them seven times in a row, is they are bad. They are not good. That program is exactly where the U.S. program was about 11 years ago, right after we missed a World Cup, and there's a lot of changes that need to be made there. And so you do have to take that with a bit of a grain of salt. And so I am I could not be more excited to see them play against South American competition this summer. Uh, they should be a semifinal team. The only, the only gripe I have, I kind of wish... And, and I say this knowing that the U.S. is going to play a game in Kansas City, I kind of wish we were doing it on South American soil to go away, to have that experience, to have that challenge, 
and that growing opportunity. Uh, but alas, I am I am still very very excited for Copa America this summer and and the the semifinals and the finals of the Nations League. It just cemented that for me. And mentioned there, kind of the route through the knockout rounds. There, the group the U.S. is in, they get out of it as we expect. They're going to come up against Colombia uh, in the quarterfinals, and then looks like Brazil in the semifinals if it all goes as expected. So that is the test, right? In in Charlotte, North Carolina, against Brazil in the semifinals of the Copa America, that is for me the game the U.S. has to get to and then deliver in. Um, I say, I agree with you, Andy. Semi-finals is bare minimum. And as long as there is a good performance, whatever happens in that game, um, then that is a step, a huge step forward uh, for the US, given the competition they're going to be against this summer. Nick, what are you going with, mate? Um, <laughs> get out of the group stage at least two and one. Uh, win the two games you're supposed to win. Be that vibes team. Uruguay, we'll see what happens, but I'm not, I'm certainly not counting on a semifinal. Um, they were, I don't want to say fortunate, but they, they made a semifinal, but they got to play Ecuador. Um, and so Colombia's good. <laughs> so good performance in that quarterfinal, I would take. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a big summer for the U.S. men's national team. We'll keep you covered here on Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com as Greg Berhalter's side are really surging towards a big tournament. We will finally get to see just how good this team can be. And it will get us all very excited about two summers from now as well and the World Cup on home soil. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.